Hello and welcome to a short edition of 10 Buck Test Bench. We're going to take a quick look at a Model 147 ICO signal tracer that I picked up for the test bench videos. And uh, some improvements that I made. Now I'm not going to bore you with restoration of this unit. There's a hundred people doing that out there. This is about how we can improve this and make this a better unit on the bench. First of all, I replaced the two pin jacks with BNCs. I've never liked the pin jacks. I've, they're still installed here. But most of my test leads have, not BNC, excuse me, banana, banana plugs on them, which I find much more robust, much more useful, and easier to deal with. Those of you worried, now this one's cosmetically crap anyway. I picked this up cheap, but electrically it's fine. Those of you worried about uh, ruining the resale value of your 147. Here is a banana plug, here is a pin jack. Same size hole. You remove the pin jack, you put the uh, banana jack in there. You haven't ruined the resale value at all. Keep these in a bag, you can reinstall them or sell, you know, sell them along with the unit to the next owner when you get rid of it. However, now I can use standard test leads. Two, I've put a BNC connector here for the RF input. This is the high gain portion of the amplifier on these. Again, here's the original microphone style. I never liked these. They work, but they were awkward to build the other part for, and just, they were never, I never liked them. BNC panel jack, again, same size thread, same size hole. You're not damaging the unit in the least. The more important item is this, a three-wire grounded plug. When I got this unit, turned it on, the guy told me it worked. It indeed did work. But I touched this and this and got a nasty bite. Now, I know you're thinking immediately the capacitor that goes from the line to ground, which is a common failure, and this one indeed had quite a bit of leakage as did every other paper capacitor in here however I removed that capacitor completely to finish my testing before I recapped it and still got a nasty bite that told me that the transformer was leaking and I verified I did go through I disconnected the uh, watt meter transformer had nothing but the primary of the main transformer connected I absolutely double triple checked it and every time I would touch this and another piece of gear, I got a bite. The worst problem was the hum it created. When you tried to use the RF input, the high impedance input, tremendous amount of hum. I couldn't get near the signal generator or I had to turn the signal generator way up to be able to hear the audio modulation on the RF signal. There was just so much hum. Now, let me qualify or quantify this leak. My VOM, my good old triplet over here in the background even on its most sensitive resistance setting and that's times 100k could detect no continuity between here and the AC line this leakage is small it's enough to give you an unpleasant tingle but it doesn't show up on an ohm meter hence the three wire cord I have a lot of old test equipment that has transformers that do this. Not uncommon at all. However, add a fuse on the line side. Internally, we have one of these fuse holders with a one amp fuse. Safety, 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 guys. So we now have a properly grounded piece of test equipment. We have a fused piece of test equipment. There is no longer any bite from this unit to any other piece of gear I've got in here. It's safe to use, no shock hazard, no fire hazard because it has a fuse should the transformer fail. I do not think it will fail. I have other pieces of gear that have exhibited this behavior and I've owned them for years. No problems with them. Now the possibility does exist. However, I'm confident that this unit's gonna be fine. Test probes. These are some old Heath kit test probes that I had laying around. Some improvements I've made to these. 
first of all you get these out of people's you know two dollar bucket at the flea market most of the time the little screws that hold these together are stripped out they're little tiny self thread cutting screws that go in there people never bother backing them up and feeling the original thread when they run them in they just screw them in they cut new threads three or four insertions there's no more aluminum left to bite the wall thickness of these plastic parts is fairly substantial it's about a quarter of an inch run a 256 tap down through use a standard machine screw they'll tighten right up again if those ever wear out you can go to a 440 thread retap them the plastic is fairly robust I have also now th this one here was a scope demodulator probe I had several of these in pieces laying around it is now wired to the ICO schematic I removed all the stuff that was in there and put simply the crystal diode 1N48 and the 470k ohm resistor so that it's wired exactly as ICO wanted it however when you pick these up this part here has no ground or had no ground so when you pick this up you induced hum I got rid of that by running a wire from the braid out here to a little lug and putting it under the screw to the metal shield now when you pick this up there's no hum because it's tied to ground I also encase the whole thing in clear heat shrink so I am isolated from this so should I be holding this and inadvertently come in contact with something live in the circuit I'm not going to get a shock I'm very very careful I'll be putting some heat shrink on here as well but now the probe is isolated it has a shield so the hum pickup is minimal and it, you know that's grounded here's another Heath kit probe I'm using this one for the audio input because it just happened to already have banana jacks on the other end that fit the audio input internally this is like any other scope probe there's resistors a compensation capacitor it has a times one and a times ten setting I've simply left it in the times one setting so now that it is a uh, pass-through for audio the switch that's in here had a metal body on it so I ran a, an internal wire from the shield of the coax and soldered it to the uh, the metal bracket on the switch the metal bracket of the switch is screwed to the aluminum tube I have ground and again I've covered it in heat shrink tubing so now I have a nice usable audio probe just some quick changes I've made to the unit now when I plug into the RF unit or RF side of this thing excuse me you can hear a little bit of a hum that's fairly normal grid hum, hum it's just I'm picking up the AC you can see how sensitive this is I'm picking up the AC from the blind cord if I ground it the hum is gone even at full volume on this thing it's virtually silent now there's a tiny tiny amount of hum in the background that is normal for line operated equipment with tubes there's going to be a tiny amount of hum in the background however I can come over here to the signal generator and even on its lowest RF setting with it set for modulated RF you can hear I'm demodulating the art the probe is working as it should and if I turn this up even slightly I have to lower the gain here so we're demodulating the tone that's on the RF coming out of the generator which means I'll be able to use this very effectively to trace circuits through our radio how low is that signal well I'll show you I'm gonna turn the RF all the way down again and in the background we've got my tektronics on two millivolts per division and at that setting just the internal noise is showing a wider trace even if I go to ground 
there's some noise there. On two millivolts per division, most scopes will do this. There's five millivolts, 10 millivolts. You can see we have a nice clean straight trace now. If I go to five millivolts, still a fairly clean trace. When I go to two millivolts, the trace gets a little wider. That's internal noise in the scope. But I'm gonna hook it up over here to the RF generator. And as you can see, there's something there, but not enough to be a usable signal. So the signal tracer is going to do a very good job of letting me trace that modulated RF through whatever circuit I'm working on. Now, if I turn this up, and come on, why aren't you syncing up here? Here we go. You can see the modulated RF. And as I turn it down, 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 barely discernible barely discernible that would not really be useful you wouldn't know if you were looking at noise or an actual signal this is where the signal tracer comes in so handy when you're going through a circuit I can come over here and I can actually hear my RF being demodulated that will prove to be very useful unplug that plug this back in this is for tracing through the audio section. It's just a high gain amplifier, not nearly as high gain as the RF input. We put this on audio and we'll be able to track through our audio section with that. And again, when I clip that on there, it becomes virtually silent. That's full volume. No AC hum pickup from the probe anymore. It used to be if I picked it up, especially with the ground lead off, you can see I'm making virtually no difference. Everything you're hearing is what's being picked up by the probe extension. Touching this no longer affects it. And this, you, oops, I'm out of the field of view here. Sorry. Touching this no longer affects it. It used to be if I touched this, the hum amplitude would go up like that. Now it's no longer affected by my hand, nor is this one because they're properly grounded and shielded. Okay, that's it. Quick modifications you can make to your 147A. Ground it, fuse it, shield your test probes. Change all those nasty paper capacitors and the filters. You'll have a piece of test equipment that you can use for many years. Don't worry about the cosmetics. They don't make it work any better. I'm the Radio Mechanic. Thanks for riding along. See ya.